Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this last and concluding lecture for this course on introduction to modern Indian political thought. And in this lecture today what we are going to do is not to look at a particular thinker and some of the key themes um, uh, that we have been doing for many thinkers in this course. In this course basically uh, one of the um, uh, possible direction of doing research in uh, modern political thought in contemporary times that I have been talking about throughout this um, course is to look at certain themes and through that themes try to uh, connect or try to study the uh, thinkers in the comparative perspective. So, uh, today in this lecture what we are going to do is to first discuss basically the reason why we should study uh, political thought, how it can contribute in uh, helping us understand a society or uh, the polity in a better manner and also the difference between political theory and political thought and then we will focus on a certain key themes which is common to many thinkers and then we will try to uh, analyze, try to study how they have uh, 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 different position or articulation on uh, certain themes. So, be it religion and politics, nation or uh, cosmopolitanism, caste and gender, socialism or democracy or secularism. So, around these themes how uh, uh, different thinkers develop their understanding and how they differ from each other. So, in that way we are going to um, uh, conclude this uh, uh, course by looking at certain key themes which is common to many thinkers and then finally, um, uh, we will conclude by looking at the possible direction of doing um, um, research or doing further studies on modern Indian political thought in a way of um, um, assessing. Uh, or also explaining the reason for inclusion and exclusion of certain thinkers from this uh, course. So, the first thing that we need to examine or to understand is why to study modern Indian political thought. So, first reason for uh, doing more, uh, modern Indian political thought or political thought in any society for that manner is to understand and interpret Indian society and politics in a better manner. So, if we study the political thought of modern India and the closer engagement or critical engagement with the uh, modern Indian political thought will enable us to understand the society and politics of uh, contemporary India in a better manner. The second is that through these thinkers we can also understand the two centuries of Indian history, the past two centuries of Indian history its various ups and downs as seen and interpreted by the men and women who themselves helped shape and define these most interesting period of Indian history. So, uh, the ideas or the themes that we have discussed in this course and the thinkers that we have included were someone who were deeply involved in the active politics of their time and they were also thinking about the uh, future of India and also uh, reflecting upon the various challenges that uh, India was uh, facing. So, by uh, engaging with the thoughts and ideas of these thinkers, we can possibly understand the two uh, centuries of modern Indian history through the eyes or through the uh, views of, of them who themselves helped 
shape those interesting period of um, modern Indian history. Uh, these thinkers were not someone just reflecting or contemplating, uh, contemplating about social and political challenges of India. They were themselves embedded in the politics of their time and that activism and also reflection upon those activism and the challenges that the country and the world as a whole was facing will make uh, their contribution even more interesting and fascinating to engage with to understand or to critically evaluate as well. So, what we also find in uh, many of these thinkers that their uh, ideas and thoughts uh, emerge in a context where India was uh, ruled by the British. So, um, their ideas emerge in the context of colonialism in response to the orientalist thinking. So, uh, as one of the objective of this course is also to think about the concepts, ideas and methods which uh, is not obsessed with the Eurocentric views, concepts and method, but to think about uh, new uh, concepts or methods to understand the society um, in a better way, to explain and interpret its various challenges in the uh, better way without uh, relying exclusively on the Eurocentric concepts and methods. So, um, these thinkers um, um, uh, trying to think through various problems and challenges in the context of orientalist challenge during the colonial rule in India. And they have a kind of uh, a metaphysical and epistemological assumption that differs sharply from the uh, waste. So, on the nature of uh, individual, individual role in the society, role of religion in the politics, what should be the objective of human life, how to lead a good, um, a good life, how to constitute a, um, a uh, desired uh, nation or a state and what should be the role of a state and what should be the contribution of society, community in helping individual realizing the objective of his or her life. So, um, uh, to, uh, to understand uh, these questions uh, and uh, try to uh, provide um, uh, answer or the um, appropriate response to uh, this uh, orientalist uh, challenges that um, uh, there is no thought, there is no uh, philosophy, there is no um, uh, scientific um, approach in thinking about um, what they call the uh, um, immanent world. So, uh, for many orientalist writers and scholars, Indian philosophy is more esoteric and thinking or reflecting about otherworldly, metaphysical uh, kind of life. These thinkers were trying to uh, respond to such challenges to establish uh, the, uh, uh, to establish or assert the um, thinking about the modern uh, contemporary or material um, uh, material life um, uh, uh, and how Indian uh, thought about uh, those um, immanent or uh, material um, social political life as well. In doing that, they have a metaphysical and epistemological assumption which is sharply different from the um, uh, metaphysical or the epistemological assumption of the West talking about individual or society or the relationship between individual and society or society and state or individual and the state in a very different manner that we have in the Western political thought. To understand these uh, things, to understand the society better, to understand how uh, modern Indian political thought emerges in a context of colonialism and in response to the orientalist challenges and also to see the unfolding of two centuries of modern Indian history through the eyes or through the views of those who themselves helped shape such uh, unfolding or such uh, uh, processes. Uh, Indian political thought and closer engagement with the Indian political thought will help us to understand uh, these things in a better manner. Second point that I want to discuss is uh, some of you have asked these questions also the difference between theory and thought. So, there is no as such hard and fast 
uh, water tight compartment between political theory on the one hand and political thought on the other hand. You will find many uh, concepts or ideas overlapping between these two uh, sub disciplines of politics because essentially both of them are talking about the politics in a society or in a country. So, um, however, one can make an analytical uh, distinction between political theory on the one hand and political thought on the other. So, what we find in political theory is a kind of um, broader or systematic and generalized statements that help in understanding or explaining politics in a country or a society. For example, through the concepts like say freedom, equality, democracy or justice, we uh, these are normative uh, concepts and uh, they have their own uh, connotations or uh, conceptualization. Now, by understanding these concepts, we try to understand or explain the uh, politics of any society. So, whether that society or politics in that society is a democratic or not, we can understand or explain better if we understand this concept of democracy first or uh, so is the case with the concepts like liberalism, free, uh, freedom or equality, justice, so on and so forth. So, basically political theory uh, enables you, provide us the concept through which we try to understand or explain the politics in a society or a country. So, it is a more broader or generalized statement about politics uh, in a country or a society. Now, in comparison to that, political thought is more uh, limited or narrow to the individual or group of individuals. So, uh, political thought is narrow and limited articulation or reflection upon these articulation and reflection is done usually by a individual or a group of individual. So, uh, for example, in this course, we have um, selected few uh, uh, thinkers and through them we try to understand some uh, key concepts or key themes and which um, is representative of modern Indian political uh, thinking. So, uh, these uh, themes we have tried to understand through the writings of some of the key thinkers of modern India. So, um, uh, political thought uh, in comparison to uh, political theory con is considered to be narrow and limited in a sense which is about the reflection or articulation of a individual or a group of individual about the structure and functioning of politics in any society. So, this uh, that is a kind of analytical conceptual distinction one can make between political theory and thought, but both are overlapping in more than one ways also. So, for a very long time political theory for its concepts and ideas um, was dependent on political thought. So, uh, whether it is the concepts of uh, democracy, equality, freedom, justice, state, sovereignty all these concepts and ideas are derived from the political thought. So, uh, one cannot really make a kind of uh, clear cut uh, water tight compartmentalization between political theory and thought. They overlap uh, uh, more often and uh, essential um, uh, feature of um, both is to understand, explain and interpret politics in a society or a country also. So, in Indian political thought with closer engagement with Indian political thought, we can also find that uh, it enables or it is conducive for the growth of Indian political theory as well. So, political theory in India or uh, while explaining about uh, politics in India, there is still excessive reliance on Eurocentric views, concepts and methods. By um, and uh, this is my proposition by closer or critical engagement with modern political theory, we can derive or we can uh, develop certain vocabulary concepts and methods to, uh, to, uh, uh, to explain or understand Indian society and politics in a better manner. So, now if you look at the major concerns of modern Indian political thinkers, they were trying to um, um, combine or trying to harmonize 
between uh, the between or among the contradictory forces in the society as a well. So, uh, their concern was to harmonize between national unity and religious di diversity or even discord. So, um, for most of the Indian political uh, thinkers, their concern was how to reconcile or harmonize between these contradictory forces of national unity or fighting for national liberation on the one hand and the religious acrimony or religious divide that was there uh, throughout the anti-colonial struggle as well. So, uh, the uh, major concern for these thinkers was to harmonize or reconcile between national unity on the one hand and religious diversity or even discord on the other. The other concerns advancements of rights of the uh, lower caste and women who were largely excluded and marginalized in Indian society as well as in the polity uh, too. And this struggle for participation of uh, women and the lower caste in the uh, politics of um, our country is still uh, going on and there are numerous struggle going on for the um, <coughs> advancement of rights of uh, lower castes and women. And the other uh, uh, concerns were like individual freedom on the one hand which is basis of all creavi uh, creativity and progress and the social equity. So, uh, the imagination of individual is uh, very different. Of course, there are many um, uh, differences within or among the modern Indian political thinkers, but largely if we compare it with the western conceptualization of individual in the society, uh, here we find uh, certainly like in Arvindu, Iqbal, Gandhi and many others, the individual is embedded uh, in the uh, society or community. So, um, uh, to, uh, to uh, reconcile and again harmonize between the individual freedom on the one hand and social equity on the other hand was also the major concern of these thinkers. Again, the material prosperity and a spiritual accomplishment in nationalist ideals and global approach on the other is some of the major concerns which these thinkers were trying to engage with or deal with in their uh, reflection and articulation about society and politics of modern India. So, other feature of modern Indian uh, thinkers were that many of them, several Indian political thinkers had the whole of humanity and not just the Indian as their audience. So, uh, they were transcending the limits of not just caste, class, uh, reason, language, nation or nationalism. Of course, many of them uh, were actively involved in the anti-colonial struggle and wanted uh, independence for India. But for many of them, the world as a whole was their audience and certainly uh, for thinkers like Iqbal or Abhinandanath Tagore uh, to great extent uh, Gandhi or um, Jawaharlal Nehru and also uh, Arvind Ghosh, they were trying to uh, situate or trying to uh, uh, relate to or respond to the global uh, problems as well. So, for them the audience is then not just the Indian people, but also the whole humanity as such. So, they offered theories for the resolution of not merely Indian predicaments or problems, but of world problems or uh, predicaments or issues as well. So, in their effort to unite their country and make it more democratic, they also explored the ways in which India could engage with other nations in an increasingly interconnected world. For them, the national independence or national liberation is not to keep India isolated or aloof from the rest of the world. Even during the time of anti-colonial struggle, many thinkers were engaged with say in Tagore, we have seen how he emphasized on um, uh, human unity or Arvind Ghosh talking about um, a, um, um, or providing the theoretical basis for a kind of uh, non-European uh, thinking about um, um, organizing the uh, world polity in a very um, uh, very different way. Um, so, uh, these, think, uh, these thinkers or especially Gandhi, Nehru and Congress talking about uh, liberation movement in parts of Asia and Africa 
um, uh, and uh, extending the solidarity to their um, anti colonial struggle as well. So, for uh, many of them, uh, the um, role of India is not just about um, ensuring its own independence from the imperial rule of the uh, British, but also to extend uh, 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 its uh, solidarity to the uh, African or Asian countries fighting their uh, colonizers or imperial rule in their uh, their countries and to help in democratizing the whole world or in uh, bringing about peace, harmony and stability in the world as a whole. So, for them the, uh, their concern or um, ideas were not limited to India alone, but it uh, uh, transcended the limits or the boundary of a nation or nationality. Now, in uh, these thinkers we also find uh, or uh, this is merely for the analytical purpose to uh, uh, divide them uh, broadly among the three kind of uh, thinkers. Uh, the first among those were uh, the thinkers who favored imitative reproduction of the modern western modes of political thinking action and organization. So, there was the modernizing elite who wanted to modernize India to work for its economic uh, development to organize it politically according uh, along with modern line and they wanted to do it by imitating the concepts, ideas or political thinking or, or organization uh, from the modern West. So, they were uh, uh, someone who wanted to reproduce by imitating the ideas, concepts and political thinking from the modern West. In second group of thinkers, we find there is many who believed and attempted to create a blending of traditional Indian and modern Western paradigms of politics. So, in their thinking and thought, we will find the blending of modern Western political thinking on the one hand and deeper engagement with the classical tradition of uh, Indian uh, thinking and ideas on the other. So, uh, there is a kind of combination of tradition and modernity in their thought. Gandhi can be one of such uh, thinkers, certainly Tagore and also Arvindu can be regarded as thinkers who are trying to blend this modern western thinking with the traditional thinking as well. In the second group of thinkers who believed in the revival of and admiration of Indian classical traditions of social political thought and ideas. Now, for uh, analytical purpose, we can broadly divide uh, modern Indian political thinkers basically into three groups. So, um, one uh, group of thinkers favored a kind of imitative reproduction of modern western modes of political thinking, action and organization. So, these were the modernizing elite who uh, were convinced or believed in the modern ideals of uh, polity, economy, progress or uh, development and they wanted to reproduce uh, these ideas by blindly or uh, by imitating the ideals of the modern West and modes of their thinking. Now, in the second group of thinkers we find they were someone who believed in the revival of an admiration for India's classical tradition of social political thought and ideas. So, I have discussed about Rabindranath Tagore and how he uh, was trying to articulate the uh, reason for India's degeneration is that we have lost the connect with our inner self. Similarly, in the thoughts of Vivekananda or Arvindu or even to some extent Gandhi and Iqbal and many others they were trying to revive or um, admire the political thinking or um, uh, social and political ideals that was there in the classical tradition of India and they wanted to revive such. Even uh, the um, Jawaharlal, Nehru, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru when we uh, discussed the discovery of India. So, in him there is a kind of blending of uh, modern uh, western think, uh, thinking which is a kind of third group of uh, thinkers who attempted to create a blending of traditional Indian 
and the modern western paradigm of politics. So, in their thought and thinking we will find a kind of blending or combination of tradition and modernity. Now, uh, in the rest part of the lecture we are going to discuss some of the common themes and how uh, different thinkers have articulated about these themes. So, first major uh, uh, theme um, uh, for many of these uh, thinkers was the idea of religion and how it is uh, related to uh, politics. So, religion and politics, so in the uh, political thought of Rav, uh, Ram Mohan Roy, um, Gandhi, Tagore, Vivekanand, Iqbal, Savarkar and many others, we see how their thought was deeply intertwined with the uh, idea of religion. So, uh, they differ from each other about the uh, 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 understanding of religion and also the role of religion in the politics, but nonetheless religion remains a deeply embedded concepts in their social and political thought. So, in Ramon Roy to begin with what we find is a kind of scientific and rational approach to religion and that scientific and rational approach uh, towards religion allowed many thinkers following Raja Ram Mohan Roy to fight many dogmas, um, irrational practices and superstitions that was carried out in the name of religion. So, uh, various social and religious reforms movement in the early um, uh, 19th century or the um, uh, throughout the 20th century in India is uh, a kind of result of such kind of uh, approach to uh, religion. Ram Mohan Roy interestingly also equated religious uh, rights or protection of religious rights as necessary as protection of civil and political rights. So, in many of his memorandums as we have discussed, we find him defending the religious rights um, uh, uh, of the individual and community as, uh, as well and uh, challenging or criticizing the Christian missionary and the uh, conversion carried out by the uh, uh, missionaries uh, as well. In uh, Gandhi, Tagore and Vivekananda, we can find a kind of practical and pragmatic approach to religion which is uh, a kind of liberal interpretation based on the inclusion or accommodative principles of, uh, of other. Now, in the thoughts of Iqbal and Savarkar, certainly in Iqbal, we find the uh, role of religion and using religion as a uh, basis for articulation of uh, nation or uh, pan-Islamic uh, thought as well as in Iqbal. Similarly, in Savarkar, we find the idea of Hindu nation or Hindutva based on the uh, religious practices of a particular community in that. So, there is a kind of uh, scientific rational approach to religion towards uh, to uh, more a kind of flexible, inclusive and accommodative understanding of religion and its role in the polity to a more exclusionary kind of understanding or uh, interpretation of religion as we find in uh, Iqbal and uh, uh, Savarkar. For uh, uh, different thinkers, there is a kind of uh, different approach to the religion and politics which we have discussed, but uh, the dominant uh, understanding or the major articulation of the role of religion in politics uh, certainly uh, through the thought uh, thinking of uh, Gandhi, Tagore, um, even Arvind Ghosh or Vivekananda, the thought of religion as something which enables the individual as well as the society to harmonize, to attain peace or to realize its own true nature. So, uh, in the thought of Arvind Ghosh, we have seen how he articulated the role of religion in uh, the life of individual and also in the um, uh, community life uh, as well. The other major theme uh, is the notion of Hinduism and Hindutva. So, again the for the many uh, modern Indian thinkers, they have a very liberal, inclusive and pragmatic interpretation of Hinduism, which is accommodative of other. So, uh, the uh, interpretation of Hinduism in Gandhi, Tagore or Arbindu or even Vivekananda is very different from 
the articulation of Hindutva as it is done by Savarkar, which is a more exclusionary kind of articulation and that articulation or exclusionary ideals which Savarkar articulated as Hindutva becomes a kind of political ideology which is very distinct from this liberal inclusive uh, kind of Hinduism as interpreted by say Arbindu, Gandhi or Vivekananda. His ideals of Hindutva was very distinct from such articulation and for him Hindustan is both as the fatherland and the holy land this we have uh, discussed and that understanding becomes the basis of Hindu uh, nationalism. So, in these uh, thinkers the Hinduism and Hindutva also uh, becomes the major theme in their social and political thinking and there again we fall also find a kind of uh, uh, variety of approach to understand Hinduism or interpret it and uh, use it as the basis for forming a kind of exclusionary ideals or identity like Hindutva as done by um, uh, Savarkar. The other uh, themes uh, that um, um, is dominant in the political thought of many uh, thinkers is the idea of secularism. So, what should be the um, nature of uh, state? Should it be a secular state or a theocratic state? And as we have seen the um, emergence of modern Indian political thought is about uh, uh, reforming the society and the religious practices uh, in India and that led to a kind of uh, mobilization uh, around the issue of religion, caste, uh, language and so on and so forth. So, the identity on the basis of religion or say caste or language or reason uh, is something dominant in Indian, Indian politics. Now, uh, in such a context, they articulated uh, the nature of a state which should not be having any religion of its own. So, there is a kind of um, 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 tripartite approach towards religion where uh, there is a kind of Hindu nationalism approach which want to assert and define India as a Hindu nation. On the other hand, you have the Muslim separatist approach, we promoted the idea of two nation theory. Separate to these two is the ideals of uh, Gandhi and Nehru who talked about a secular India where a state has nothing to do with um, a religion or it maintains a kind of equidistance or a kind of neutrality from all religion or provide um, protection or uh, equal respect to all, all religion. So, in the thoughts of Gandhi, Nehru, Tagore and many other thinkers, we find the ideals of secularism which talks about religious pluralism, tolerance and accommodation, equal respect for all religions and also protection of minority rights that is there in Indian constitution. So, one can find there is a kind of difference between Gandhian ideals of uh, say uh, religion and its role in the polity or Nehruvian understanding of religion and its role in the polity where he uh, wanted to make it a kind of uh, uh, separation between these two domain of religion and politics. But for Gandhi, there is a, um, a, a role of religion in the public political life as well. So, uh, Nehru talks about a separate domain of religion and politics, but they uh, nonetheless share this ideal of secularism as the defining feature of Indian state. The other theme in modern Indian thinkers are self and community. So, um, in the thoughts of Aurobindo, Tagore, Gandhi and Iqbal, we find the focus on individual or individual self as reflection of uh, divine or the activities of individual their ultimate objective is to realize his or her true self and that realization of true self requires the individual to connect it with the say universal man or universal self as in the thought of Tagore, Aurobindo and many other modern Indian thinkers which uh, they thought of individual self as the part of larger self or the universal uh, man or universal uh, uh, self. 
So, uh, this connection of individual soul to the larger universal soul or self is something very unique to modern Indian political thinkers and uh, therefore, in their understanding of individual, individual is not confined to his or her biological being, but it extends towards the spiritual side of the human existence on the one hand and the social and the community life on the other hand. So, many of these thinkers also thought about the role of community in the realization of true ideals of the individual. So, uh, and for many of these thinkers see uh, as we have discussed in Gandhian uh, ideals of oceanic circle. So, there is the kind of interdependence of self uh, and the community where individual is regarded as the basis of all progress and creativity. So, even when the individual is embedded in the collective life of community, he or she has the freedom to, uh, to uh, excel his own or her own uh, skill and uh, develop his or her own creativity and uh, contribute in the larger life of the society and community also. So, um, for many of the modern Indian thinkers, the idea of self and community remains one of the dominant theme. The idea of nationalism again is something very important for many modern Indian thinkers and they differ from each other as well. So, uh, for someone like Aurobindo, nation is a kind of uh, divine mother. As a prophet of Indian nationalism, as Aurobindo is regarded by many scholars, he uh, conceptualized uh, India or Indian nation as a divine mother. So, from that kind of understanding of nationalism, you have the secular nationalism as in the thought of Gandhi, Nehru and Congress to a religious conceptualization of nation and nationalism as in the thought of Savarkar or Iqbal or many other Muslim separatist leader. In uh, comparison to that kind of a secular or religious nationalism, you also have a ideals of Swaraj which is much uh, broader and bigger than the idea of mere political independence. It is about the self-rule and self-rule is the ability to govern oneself. So, um, uh, the anti-colonial movement for national liberation from the British rule and in that process the ideals of Swaraj in not just political sphere, but also in social, economic and individual sphere is something which is very crucial to understand the complexities of uh, thinking or theorization about nationalism. We also have critique of nationalism when uh, the ideals of nation or nationalism was uh, shaping the thinking of many modern Indian thinkers. So, uh, most importantly in the thoughts of uh, Tagore, we have discussed how for Tagore, he is not just against a form of nationalism, but the very ideals of nationalism which uh, for him is uh, obstructing the uh, uh, unity uh, unity between and among the nations. So, instead of mutual uh, love or trust, it is based on uh, uh, selfish interest and uh, develop mistrust among uh, communities or among the nations. So, therefore, in um, uh, Tagore, you have the strong critique of the very ideals of nationalism when the ideals of nationalism was thinking the thoughts of a separate, uh, separatist or uh, secular nationalist like Gandhi and, um, and Gandhi and Nehru. So, um, similarly in Iqbal as we have discussed he was thinking about uh, nation or theorizing it on the basis of Islam and yet he developed a critique of any kind of nationalism and thought about pan-Islamism or uh, uh, develop a, a uh, critique of territorial definition of nation and nationalism also. So, in many modern Indian political thinkers, we have uh, seen and discussed how they uh, have different approach or understanding about nationalism. Also, on cosmopolitanism and internationalism, we see in the uh, uh, thinking of Tagore, Gandhi, Arvindu and Iqbal, also Nehru. the ideals of nation in combination with the uh, global um, um, politics or the interna uh, international and cosmopolitan approach in their thought and thinking. And this is part of the uh, 
uh, ideals of Vasudev Kutumbakam, which is there in um, uh, Indian uh, tradition of thought, which considered the whole world as one family. Many modern Indian thinkers develop their own um, understanding, and as we have discussed, for them the audience is not just the Indians; they were equally embedded and engaged with the problems and predic predicaments of the world as well. So, in the thoughts of Tagore, we find a kind of rooted and practical approach of uh, approach to cosmopolitanism. So, unlike many other scholars and thinkers who talked about contemplative or a kind of abstract theorization of cosmopolitanism, Tagore argued about a kind of practical approach to, uh, to cosmopolitanism, which is rooted in its own uh, tradition, culture, or sensibility, and yet open to um, uh, uh, to relate or learn from other cultures, histories and uh, uh, traditions. So, that um, um, dialogue or the unity between and among different particularities that is what uh, championed by uh, Tagore and thinking about cosmopolitanism as a way of being in the world, not merely a kind of contemplative or theoretical exercise as argued by many other scholars. Also, in the thoughts of Iqbal, we also find a kind of religious basis of cosmopolitan thought, so is in the thought of Aurobindo Ghosh. Nehru and Gandhi uh, very interestingly combine the nationalism with internationalism. So, uh, for them, India to play a um, uh, effective role in the global politics, it needs to first attain its independence. So, for Gandhi and Nehru, uh, they did not limit the aspiration of Indian people merely to political independence, but for them political independence is as necessary as India's role in the global, uh, global politics. So, in uh, Nehru and um, Gandhi, we find a kind of combination of nationalism and internationalism in the thought of Tagore, uh, Arvindo, Iqbal, we uh, see the idea of cosmopolitanism. So, uh, that also makes something very uh, interesting about modern Indian political thinkers. Now, on ideas of democracy, they uh, thought about democracy in a very distinctive way, which was uh, more sensible or rooted or embedded in the Indian context as well. So, they were not uh, just thinking about legal and political democracy that ensure that everyone is equal and they have equal opportunity in the political process of their country. Many of the thinkers certainly in Ambedkar, we have seen how he put equal emphasis to the social and economic democracy as well. So, it is not just enough to have a political democracy, but to sustain that political and legal democracy, there is a need for social and equal uh, social and economic democracy as well. And throughout the nationalist movement, we see a kind of uh, contestation between uh, political, those who were arguing for the political reforms or political independence first and those who were uh, thinking about social equality and uh, con uh, contesting or fighting against the social hierarchy on the other hand, throughout the national movement. So, Ambedkar and many other thinkers talking about the social reform, social equality and the Congress and many uh, other thinkers talking about political liberation from the British rule first and then we can think about social reforms uh, and uh, so on. So, uh, in uh, Indian thinkers, their conceptualization of uh, democracy does uh, uh, talk about, do talk about um, um, social and economic democracy as well along with legal and political uh, democracy. Now, um, there is a kind of um, understanding about uh, the role of a state, where we find in uh, the ideas of uh, Ambedkar and Nehru, a kind of uh, strong support for a interventionist state. So, for them to regulate a society like India, govern by so many irrational practices, rituals or superstitions, there is a need of a strong and interventionist state 
to modernize the society and polity, polity of India. So, they argued for a strong and interventionist state. Now, in uh, contrast to that kind of idea, in uh, the ideals of uh, say Gandhi and also Ram Manohar Lohia, we find a kind of decentralized understanding of a democracy where power flows from bottom up rather than top down. Uh, again, on constitutional morality in the uh, thoughts of Ambedkar, we have um, uh, discussed how he argued that uh, uh, the constitutional morality is something which ne we need to nurture. It is not uh, given or we do not have this uh, culture because we have a constitution. So, uh, he wanted Indians to forego certain method of politics which he considered as the grammar of anarchy such as satyagraha or any uh, means of politics which is extra constitutional. So, uh, constitutional morality is something which is also very um, uh, fascinating to uh, uh, think about uh, um, understanding or to engage with understanding of democracy in the thoughts and thinking of many modern Indian thinkers. Again on uh, socialism, we find uh, Lohia arguing for a distinct Indian brand of socialism which is different from both capitalism or communism and also any other ism, so democratic socialism and so on and so forth and he wanted to uh, conceptualize a very distinct or innovative understanding of socialism which is very distinct from its experience in the Europe and he was very critical of such Eurocentricism while thinking about socialism and the uh, Panch Madhi speech that we have discussed is very crucial to understand Lohia's brand of uh, socialism. His idea of Saptakranti and a four pillar state which is also considered as Chaukhamba Raj is a kind of combination of Gandhian ideals and also the socialist ideals also where he talks about decentralized form of democracy from the village to the district to the province and the center. Now, in these seven revolution again Lohia tries to uh, restructure Indian society along the socialist line and his arguments for uh, these reforms in the society, politics and um, um, state is something very uh, crucial to understand their thinking about uh, the future Indian society and also uh, the innovative ideals of socialism that we have in modern Indian political thought. Now, gender and caste is something which dominates the thinking of most of the modern Indian thinkers, but what we also find is a kind of distinction between those who wanted to reform caste from those who wanted to annihilate the caste such as Ambedkar also. So, this uh, debate over caste and uh, how it prevent social equality and uh, obstruct equal participation in the political process is something which uh, most of the modern Indian political thinkers thought about, but we can uh, uh, broadly divide them between those who wanted to reform the caste and the, those who wanted to annihilate the uh, annihilate the caste. More uh, in Ramabai and Lohia, we also find the equal emphasis on the men and women equality as well. So, in the thought of Gandhi and many other modern Indian thinkers. Again, on the issue of language, uh, most importantly in Ram and Lohia, but we also find in Raja Ram Mohan Roy when he was talking about translating the classical Sanskrit text into the vernacular language and uh, Gandhi championing the cause of Hindi or Hindustani. Similarly, many other modern Indian thinkers, the issue of language remains very, uh, uh, very uh, important. Ram Manohar Lahia himself championed the cause of Angreji Hatav. So, Banish English movement or Angreji Hatav movement for Lohia is not against a language per se, but the status or the privilege that is associated with a language. So, for him, um, uh, the English language enables uh, a kind of um, pri uh, privilege for a few who can speak, comprehend or express themselves in that particular language. 
and that is at the cost of the mother tongues or the Indian languages. So, he was the great champion of Indian language. He did support Hindi and for that reason he is also regarded by many as the linguistic chauvinist. But for uh, Lohia, uh, uh, the um, struggle for Indian language is not to replace one kind of st uh, privileged status with the other kind of um, privileged language or the status that is attached to a particular language, but to democratize the whole issue of um, language and its um, status. Uh, so, um, the divide between English and the Indian language or the privileged or the status that is associated with the English language is something which troubled Lohia and he supported the um, Indian language and wanted to promote Indian language in the polity and the state as well. So, th the language is the another major theme in many of the modern Indian political thinking. Now, by way of conclusion, we, what we find is that uh, political thinking or reflections with deeper engagement with active politics was the defining feature of modern Indian political thinkers. So, many of the thinkers that we have discussed, the defining feature of uh, their engagement is that while they were reflecting or thinking about uh, uh, the politics, at the same time they were deeply engaged with the active politics of their time. And the critical engagement and not blind imitation or support or rejection or partial appropriation as we have seen and discussed in the case of many thinkers like Arbindu, Vivekananda. Uh, so, the critical engagement not just blind following or reject with their thought will help political theory that we hope uh, will uh, strengthen by this critical engagement with the thinking or thought of modern Indian political thinkers. So, uh, we do have major exclusions such as Savitri Bai Phule, Jyoti Rao Phule, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, Varier Elvin, E.V. Ramaswamy uh, Perrier, Jayaprakash Narayan, or Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Deen Dayal Upadhyay and Madan Mohan Malviya. These are the major exclusions which we could not uh, uh, include in our uh, uh, discussion. But uh, despite of such exclusion, we uh, I do hope that this course does represent the major sets of ideas and opinions that constitute modern Indian political thought. And one can also uh, or must or should engage with these other thinkers as well. But I hope the thinkers we have discussed in the course do represent the various sets and opinion which constitute modern Indian political thought. Now, um, one thing that we have discussed in this course is that modern Indian political thought and critical engagement with the modern Indian political thought will help us to move away from the excessive reliance upon Eurocentric views, methods and concepts and use the uh, vocabulary and concepts which is rooted in Indian society or polity. Now, uh, the objective is then not to replace a kind of excessive reliance upon Eurocentric concepts, ideas and methods with a narrow indigeneity. So, we should not actually replace such obsession on of uh, Eurocentric views methods with a kind of narrow or limited uh, focus on indigenities or indigenous approach, but to focus more on dialogue or sambad as a way forward, as a way to re-engage with or critically engage with the thoughts of Indian tradition as well as in other traditions. So, uh, one of the social uh, political scientists Norman D. Palmer uh, did recognize the role of Indian political thought in widening or expanding the horizon of uh, modern political thinking. And he uh, writes and I quote, from India may come influences which will widen the horizons of western political thinkers and which will give political ideas a sounder foundation of philosophical and metaphysical speculation. So, the idea is not to replace uh, this uh, Eurocentric views with the 
narrow and limited uh, indigeneity kind of approach, but to focus more on engagement with the other traditions, other cultures at the same time critically engaging with one's own traditions and uh, that dialogue with the other then help in uh, giving political thought and thinking a sounder foundation or a kind of expanded horizon uh, uh, rather than a kind of limited or narrow approach either Eurocentric or a kind of narrow limited indigeneity kind of approach. The more fruitful exercise of doing a uh, political thought would be to move away from thinkers specific thought to thematic study engaging with them in a social context within a particular temporality and this is something which we have been trying to discuss um, uh, throughout this um, course and today also we try to uh, look at different thinkers uh, by focusing on particular theme. So, that kind of exercise and doing it in a particular context within a historical uh, temporalities will enable us to understand or engage with their thought more critically. So, um, uh, this um, method of doing political thought will be more uh, fruitful and engagement with various Vasa traditions which I have emphasized in my introductory lecture as well will also help us understand various critical dimensions and complexities of modern Indian political thought. So, modern Indian political thought is much broader than uh, the thought and thinking of merely key thinkers and even in while doing that we have seen that we uh, have excluded a number of other major thinkers while trying to understand the major debates and ideas that constitute modern Indian political thought. The engagement with the Vasa traditions or Indian languages uh, uh, will enable us to understand the complexities or the uh, various critical dimensions of modern political thought in a more broader way. The significant aspect of these thinkers are that their ideas and concepts continue to shape the public political discourse of our country even in contemporary times. And in fact, we can better understand and explain the contemporary challenges of our politics by critically engaging with the ideas and political thought of these thinkers. So, that is the uh, major objective of this course through which we hope that we can better understand and explain the contemporary challenges that the country is facing. So, that is um, uh, how I have uh, tried to look at and discuss some of the key themes um, of uh, the major thinkers of modern Indian political thought and I hope you have enjoyed this course. Uh, let us know your feedbacks and comments and thank you, thanks for listening.